My name is Selena Garofino. Welcome to class. If you are enjoying these practices, I invite you to join my YouTube membership to help support me creating content and bringing classes to you. If you are ready to deepen your exploration of the yoga tradition, I invite you to complete your two or 500 hour yoga teacher training with me online or in select locations around the world. And if time or finances are an issue, I offer a Yoga Alliance accredited virtual self-paced own forever training that is only $4.99 and still includes bi-weekly calls with me as well as a monthly special event. I also host transformative travel experiences and offer personal development coaching all over the world. YouTube will always get you a special discount on these programs and I invite you to join me. Today, I wanna to talk about patterning and how patterning in the universe inspires so much hope when things seem difficult. All of great nature is founded upon pattern. If you look at the rising and the setting of the sun, at seasonality, at cycles of temperature, patterning belies intelligence and it always reminds us of what's to come. There's so many cliche spiritual sayings, right, about like the, the new day will come tomorrow, but those things are cliches for a reason. And patterns by intelligence in that the more we repeat something, it offers us up the space for insight and personal revolution and revelation. Anyone who plays the piano or if you know how to ride a bike, you know that once you mastered that skill, your imagination was freed up. And that's one of the joyful things that comes with building technique in the body. So we're gonna play with some patterning in the body that might feel a little foreign to you today. We're gonna play with the patterns that are all over in the body and that give us different different energetic qualities so you can have a better sense of mastery of this personal abode that is your own. Okay, let's come to all fours and we're gonna start by finding measurement in the body. And the way that we do that is to place a block directly behind our forearm. And this is gonna inform us that we have a 90 degree angle in the wrist. And then you're gonna take a second block and place it up against your thigh so that you can find a real 90 degree angle at your hip and at your knee. Because when we hold a form really well and we don't things just do things just according to our feelings, it sets up a really structured container that allows currency to flow. So once you have those measurements, you can set the blocks back aside and then pivot your middle fingers in to touch. That's exactly your own shoulders distance apart. And of course, if that's painful for you, we can always adjust and hold the archetype in the mind. And then pivot on the heel of the thumb so the middle fingers are pointing straight forward. Spread the tops of the feet because one of the patterns in the body is that the spread of the feet is the spread of the knee is the spread of the sacrum. So this pattern repeats itself all over in the body. And now from here, tuck your tailbone as you breathe in and exhale as you open into the back bend, which is backwards than how you might be used to doing it. So in, X, in, X. And I want you to start to build a little bit of heat in the body by pumping your breath. So a forceful inhale and a forceful exhale. <laughs> Finding a real wave through your spine holding the anchor point of the feet so it still feels stable, even as you start to whip yourself up and start to build a little bit of a fire inside of the body, which will make you more malleable, another pattern from great nature, as you move forward in the practice. In, out, in, out. Good, and then pause in the center of yourself. The world might be spinning a little bit. Take a nice deep breath in. And now we're gonna take our right wrist and flip it all the way around. So another pattern we can play with in the body is there's an association between the wrist and the neck. So open up your right collarbone out to its own side. Feel how there's a sense of opening across the whole of the front body and then spin around clockwise that right shoulder. So in, great nature in our personal patterning in most Western cultures, the right hand is the hand where you sign a check and you shake a hand and you make a deal, right? It's, I don't know anyone who shakes hands with their left hand. So spin around to the right. In the esoteric dialogue of the yoga tradition, the right side is the solar side, right? It's named after the color tawny, right? So it's the sense of your scholastic self, your solar self. So spin around yourself. It's also the direction of the spin of time, right? Clockwise, we say. So you can think it's your ability to handle the world and to put yourself out into the world in intelligent ways. 
Good, pause in the center of yourself, and now take your left foot back towards the left corner of the mat. Pivot your right shin away from you a little bit and pin your left heel down. And now bring your left hand to your sacrum, to your left hip first, and start to open up your collarbones towards the top of your mat, and then take your left arm up to the sky and look out. So there's a real sense that you're turning from your center towards the top of your mat and opening up that entire left side body by virtue of the stability of the right side. And now take your left arm and spin it all the way back to the ground. Slide your left knee and right knee back in. And now take your right arm, reach it back behind you, swim it up alongside of your ear and all the way back down onto the floor. So we're back in the center of ourselves again and then whip it up again, in, out, in, out. Doing that little cat cow. Just about 10 breaths here. So nice, pause in the center of yourself. The world might be spinning a little bit. Re-anchor yourself once again. And now take your left wrist and spin it all the way around. So in most Western cultures and some non-Western cultures, the left hand is the hand of marriage. It's the emotive side of us. The heart is only like an inch off to the left, but it's to the left nonetheless. So spin around to the left now counterclockwise this great patterning in nature and in a lot of our culture of the lunar, the emotive, really opening yourself up, left collarbone out to its own side. Really nice, good. And then pause in the center of yourself once again. Spin on the left shin so the left toes come away from you. Right foot to the right side of the mat. Right hand to your hip first as you drive your pubic bone forward. Back bend towards the top of the mat. And then take your right arm up, palm flipping towards the crown of your head. Very good. And then take your right arm down to the ground, spin both knees back in. Let's take the left arm back by the hip, trace it with your gaze up and over and all the way back to the floor. Good, and now spin your hips around for a moment. So we played spinning around the shoulder. Notice which side you sort of intuitively went to first, more than likely the right, and then go left, spin it around. So nice, and then come right back to the center of yourself, curl your toes under, and go up and back to a downward facing dog. Lift your buttock bones high to the sky. Come up onto the balls of the feet. Another pattern we can play with is that the ball of the foot, and we'll call it the ball of the hand, the base knuckles, are associated with the lungs. And you notice when your heels are down, there's a density and a heaviness and you're stretching the calves, you're sort of anchored to the ground. When you come up on the ball of the foot and bend the knees and get your buttock bones nice and high and you look forward, there's a wave in the spine and a sense of buoyancy in the body. So now we're gonna play with the push-pull, which is another one of these patterns in nature, like the sighing of the tides. So inhale, go forward, <laughs> exhale, pull back. In, out, in, out playing with that polarity, playing with that patterning, forcing the breath to build a little heat. Good, and then come back to downward facing dog and hold. Again, on the balls of the feet, knees are bent because knees and all the joints in the bodies are also replicating. So when there's a fold in one place, it helps us to fold in another place with efficiency. Now take your right leg up, straight up to the sky, left knee is bent, reach through the ball of your right foot, and now shift forward, pull your knee to your nose. Good, swing your right shin across your body, flex at your right ankle. Take your right ankle to your left knee, bend your left knee again, send your hips up and back into sort of like a figure four downward facing dog. Nice job. Nice big breath here. Beautiful, and then lunge the knee back towards your nose and back up to the sky. Good, lunge your right foot all the way forward between your hands, really nice. Okay, take your hands out towards 10 and two o'clock, lift your back heel nice and wide so your sacrum is right in line with your shoulder blades, and then drop to your back knee, super nice. Good, we're gonna hinge back into almost like a happy baby shape. So pick up your right foot and your right hand, keep your knee in your right armpit, and hinge back. Crawl your left fingertips forward, 
If you practice with me a lot, you know this is a shape I really enjoy. Really opening up through that left side body. Good, re-bend the right knee. And then now from here, we're gonna hinge back a little more towards a little bit more of like a half Hanumanasana, still a little bend in the right knee. Now take your hands out towards 10 o'clock. So now you're opening up the right side. Really reach out nice and long, lengthening the whole front of your spine. Good, rock your right knee back forward. So I'm still off cutting the angle here. Straighten your back leg and now pin your back heel down. So you have like a warrior two configuration in your legs, my right knee is bent, left heel is pinned down. And now crawl your fingertips out nice and wide away from that back left foot. Super good. Walk your hands to the midline, straighten your right leg, turn your toes parallel to face the long edge of your mat. And now shorten your stance, enough that you can really get your belly to your thighs, your knees towards your armpits or even to your armpits. And now I want you to pick up your heels and the palms of your hands and lift your buttock bones. And your knees aren't gonna come all the way straight. Nice. Nice steady breath here. Really beautiful, two more big breaths. Super good, unhook from your heels, make an arc with your fingertips and turn towards the top of the mat, pin your right foot down. So I'm on the ball of my left foot here, my right leg is straight, crawl your fingertips forward and now hinge back a little bit so you're really opening up that right hamstring. I'm on the ball of the left foot, my right leg is nice and straight. Good, and now from here, I'm gonna lunge to step forward to the top of my mat. So put your weight into your right foot, pick your left foot up, and then lower your left foot next to your right foot. Walk your hands forward now, bend both of your knees. If you like, grab your two blocks and place your hands out on those blocks nice and long. Good, so even as we're moving around in sort of some of these strange movement patterns, we're continuing to fold and find the center of ourselves even as we repeat these patterns and find how we can organize things. Patterning teaches us how to organize and it teaches us how to put ourselves right in the center. Give a little more weight to your right foot and walk both hands out to the left. Look out, nice and wide, holding the middle. Good, and now take both hands over to the right. Weight the left foot a little bit more than the right. So good, come back to the center. You can set those blocks down near the top of the mat. We're gonna use them in a little bit. Fold over your legs now. Measure two fists between the arches to make sure that they're hip distance apart, and then hang over the legs for a moment. Good, interlace your hands behind your head. We're gonna roll up, so hug your elbows in. Bend your knees nice and deep. Scoop through the low belly, throw the knees forward, then the thighs, then the pubic bone, and roll yourself all the way up. Put your head back into your hands. Open the elbows nice and wide. Very good, from here, push your palms to the sky. So reach through the index fingers, push the pubis ever so slightly forward, and fold up towards the sky, good. And you might even play here coming forward onto the tippy toes for a moment and then back into the density of the heel. So again, these patterns repeat themselves in our body. The heel of the foot is the heel of the bum. It's the sensation of sitting back into the back. When we come forward onto the ball of the hand or to the ball of the foot, it puts us in our lungs and it opens things up. Good, one more breath here, kind of rocking forward and back, learning to put the brakes on and learning to put the accelerator, the pedal to the metal on. Good, we're not so unique. We often think of ourselves as separate from great nature, but we are not and we too are a repeating pattern. Good, take your hands behind your head once again, lean your head back into your hands. Now tuck your chin and your elbows in, bend your knees and roll yourself back down to the floor. Let your hands fall to the floor. Inhale and halfway lift. And then exhale and step yourself back to a downward facing dog. Nice generous bend in the knees. 
Good, take your left leg up to the sky. Repeating the pattern on the other side. Right thigh is bending in towards your belly. Take your knee to your nose as you shift forward. Then swing left ankle across right knee. And then take your hips high into this like figure four <laughs> downward facing dog situation. Opening up that left hip. Good, knee to your nose once again. Take your left leg up and back to the sky, and then knee to nose to step your left foot between your hands. Again, bring your hands out towards 10 and two o'clock, and then drop to your back knee. Nice and open, lengthening from pubis to sternum. Good, from here, pick up your left foot. Left knee is in your left armpit. Hinge back, crawl your right fingertips forward. Keep sending the left hip crease back. Really beautiful. So nice. Hinge yourself back forward now, and then hinge back into more of a half split, keeping the belly towards the thigh. Walk your hands out towards two o'clock, off to the right now. Good. I'm gonna spin around on my mat just for <laughs> ease of vision so I don't end up with my back facing you. You stay where you are. Fingertips are off towards two o'clock. Good, and then from here, we're gonna pin our right heel down in that warrior two configuration, straightening the back leg, crawling your hands out towards the angle off in front of your left foot. Good, arc your fingertips to the midline, pivot your feet to parallel. I know we didn't do this on the other side, so listen, bend your knees a little bit and crawl your hands way forward like a super wide-legged downward-facing dog. Come up on your fingertips. Nice, full, big breathing. Very good. And now walk your hands in, and then heel-toe your feet in a bit, bend your knees towards your armpits, and pick up your heels again. Lift your buttock bones to the sky. Nice and full breathing. Finding the fits and the folds in the body, another place where patterns exist within us. Now, depending on our shape, this isn't true, but our bones do line up where our knees can fit in our armpits. Our thigh, our femur bone is the length of our torso when we're folded at the hip to the armpit. Doesn't mean it fits there. We have different amounts of tissue on the body, right? But we can still know that those patterns are there and the way in which those inform that we're really part of, that we really belong here. Unhook from your heels, sweep your fingertips in an arch towards the front of the mat, bend your right knee, you're on the ball of your right foot, crawl your fingertips forward, push into the ball of the left foot, opening up that hamstring. Good, now weight your left foot, lift your right leg up, and then place your right foot next to your left. Measure two fists between the arches and fold over yourself. Good, a little different this time. I want you to bend your knees into a chair pose and swing your arms back in sort of that ski jumper position here. Good, and then fold back down again and grab your heels. Two more times, bend the knees, fingertips back, lift your chest. Fold right at the hip crease and grab the backs of the heels. One more time, bend the knees and then fold and grab. Good, bend the knees, fingertips back, circle your arms by your ears, push all the way up to stand, unfolding it, and then take your arms right back down to your side. Very nice, okay, grab your two blocks. We're gonna need them in a moment. Mine ended up at the other side of my mat because I turned around for you. Yours are probably right there, but have them ready while you'll be able to grab them. Take the opposite interlace first in your hands, so the non-habitual way. And again, flip your palms up to the sky. And it'll feel a little strange. Wrap your armpits forward. Push the index fingers up towards the sky. Super nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Good, and then take your hands behind your head, lean your head back into your hands, pubis forward. Tuck your chin and your elbows and fold yourself back down onto the mat. Good, take the tops of your hands to the floor and now flip that around so your palms are down. 
and lift up your right foot and place the interlaced hands under your right foot. So it's not super comfortable, <laughs> I promise you're okay. And then walk your left foot back. So you're in sort of a strange little Parsvottanasana configuration, pyramid pose that is, as it is known. The back of the foot, the back of the hand, it all relates to the back body. Again, these patterns in the body that belie intelligence. And I promise there's not a quiz later on these relationships between the parts of ourselves, but whatever you know, threads of phrasing that I toss your way that your mind catches, that's the bit that's for you today. You don't need to worry about remembering everything but sometimes when we play a game like this and there's a little heavier cueing and all this imaginative dialogue, it helps us to um, not wander off in the mind so much. So do you know it's intentional? Good, switch. Take the right foot out, slide your left hand, uh, foot to the top of the hands, pardon me, and step the right foot back into that strange little Parsvottanasana shape and fold it over. Keep lifting the hip creases up and back. So good. One more breath. Very nice. Undo all of that. Step your feet back forward and just fold over the legs for a moment. Shake your head out. Pick up your heels and slide the palms of the hands to the heels, the knees to the armpits, the buttock bones high. So the bottom becomes the top. Put your breath in it. Really nice, beautiful. Okay, take your hands out from under your heels, walk back to a downward facing dog for just a moment and then lower down to your knees and grab a couple blocks for a little sort of giant cat cow through the spine. So take one block and then two and they're on what we will say is, you know, Chicago height, mid height city <laughs> across the mat. And then you're gonna place those blocks just at the top of the thighs, just below the pubis, two toes curled under, pardon me. And sometimes I like to put a sandbag on my heels here. You're gonna come into an upward facing dog on the blocks. Broaden your collarbones nice and wide. Strong inner thighs towards the sky. And now pick your bum up, fold at the hip, and move back to that downward facing dog once again. Good, shoot forward right into the up dog like a giant cat cow, tapping on those blocks, and then take your bum up and back. Do that cup a couple more times, using the blocks as a boundary and a reference point so you're not going too deep. So instead, you're playing the game of volume. Nice, good and then move those blocks out of the way, please. Very good. All right, take your right leg up to the sky once again. Left knee is a little bit bent. Draw your knee to your nose once again, and then step your right foot between your hands. Good, a runner's lunge. So just like before, drop to your back knee. First find length from pubis to sternum, and then hinge yourself back. All the way back to a runner's lunge, just like before. Again, patterns belie intelligence, so we're repeating with some slight little changes. Good, re-bend the right knee, and this time we're gonna walk our hands to the inside, pivot on the right heel, turn your right toes out, and walk your hands over to the left. You can come down onto your forearms if you like, on blocks or all the way on the ground. Again, always lengthening from pubis to sternum, finding the back bend in the forward fold. Nice and open. Really good. Beautiful. Walk your hands back up. Walk your hands back in. Straighten your back leg and pivot to the long edge of your mat, just as we did before. Walk your feet in a little bit, grab the heels, knees to armpits, and fold yourself over your legs. Two big breaths. Really, really nice. Unhook from the heels, make that arc spinning back towards the top of the mat. 
This time, just like before, left knee bends, right leg is straight, hinge back into the hips, but we're gonna change it a little bit here. So wiggle your right foot to the midline, so you're like a little flamingo, and your knees are actually completely touching, and your right foot is right in the center of the mat. And now when you hinge forward, pick up your left leg, but now I want you to cross it all the way behind your right, and widen your feet apart so your little baby toes are in one line here. Super nice. Trace the center line with your prayer hands. Flip your prayer hands to the sky. Nice big breath, open up to the sky, and then fold right back down the center line. Beautiful. So here, I'm gonna take my left foot, pardon me, my right foot, over to my left hand. My left foot is gonna go to the back right corner of my mat. Drop to your back knee. So you're playing all of the surface of your mat. Lengthen yourself. Good, lift up. Back toes are curled under. Little variation of a cross-legged Anjane Asana. Now bring your fingertips back to the floor and you're gonna travel right foot in front of left. Right leg is in front of left now. A little bent knee down dog. Good, bend both of your knees nice and deep and now pivot your knees over to the right, there's, to the left, pardon me, they can only go one way. And then straighten your legs so you're in a little variation of Vashisthasana. So good, take your left hand back to the mat, bend back into that cross-legged downward facing dog. And now from here, nice and simple, sweep your left foot all the way to your right hand, drop to your back knee. Good, lift up. Nice, fingertips to the floor. And now cross your right leg behind your left at the top of the mat. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Take your prayer hands all the way up to the sky and then back to your heart center. Pause for a moment, right hip is coming forward. And now uncross your legs and just shake it out. So there's like two sides to this. Play the pattern and then also mess with the pattern to mess with your neurology. So much of yoga is about moving against our habituations emotionally, physically, so that we can open up to expanded possibilities. It's the same thing, the reason we see a coach, it's to blow open the boundary conditions of our thinking. And that's what we do in practice. Every time we go against our habits and our, like, necessary ways of doing things. Let's do that whole thing on the other side. Take your arms up to the sky, hinge from your hip crease, and fold over your legs. Inhale and take a halfway lift, and then walk your feet back to downward facing dog. Now remembering the sensation of the block there, come forward, floating up dog, not going too deep and then buttock bones high. We repeated the pattern, we repeated it with a boundary, and now we can find it on our own. Take your left leg up to the sky. Take your knee to your nose and step your left foot through. Drop to your back knee, lengthen the whole front of the spine, and then hinge your hips back. So you're in a runner's lunge. Fingertips are crawling forward, you're not locking out the knee. Nice big breath. Good, walk your hands out to the right for a moment. Rebend your left knee, pivot your left toes open, and then again, you can stay more upright, hands are out to the right, or come down onto your forearms. Always lengthening from pubis to sternum. Beautiful, nice big breath. Really, really nice job. Walk it back up and in. And then from here, again, we're gonna straighten and pivot to the long edge of our mat. Shorten the stance a little bit so that you can pick up your heels in your hands, your knees towards your armpits. Buttock bones nice and high. Play the pattern. Repeat the pattern, mess with the pattern, <laughs> good. All right, pivot back towards the top of the mat. Bring your left foot to the midline. You might need to walk your right foot in a little bit. Bend the right knee, straighten the left leg, and then we're gonna lift up that right leg, launch it forward, and cross it behind the left. Widen your legs, bring your little baby toes so that they're in an even line. Trace the center line, arms to the sky. 
Good, fold right back down. So walk your left foot a little more over to the right after or while you lunge your right foot to the left corner. Depending on your flexibility, the order of operations might be different. And then lift yourself up in that cross-legged Anjaneyasana. So good. Bring your hands to the mat, cross your left leg in front of your right. Bend your knees deeply and then pivot your toes away from you. Straighten your legs, Vashistasana. So good. Right hand to the mat, bend your knees once again. Swing your right foot all the way up to your left hand. Drop to your left knee and take your arms up. Fingertips to the floor. Cross your left leg behind your right at the top of the mat. Trace the center line. Hopefully you're not tangled up in a pretzel now. Hands to your heart center. I believe you stuck with me. Good. Uncross your legs. If those are new to you, we play with a lot of what we call cross-referencing in Katona Yoga. So finding these opposite planes and then, you know, the X marks the spot, the center and the circumference of things. And it can be a little aggravating in the beginning, right? Because we think we know how something's supposed to be done. And when we mess with that patterning, it's, um, it's confusing to our neurology, but ultimately really nourishing. Good, shake it out. Very good. Stand super well on your two feet. Weight your left foot and pull your right knee up into your chest. And you can interlace your fingers or just hold it, but find a sense where it's almost like your right knee is a ball and your palms are a mitt and you're catching the ball. Good, now hold the right knee with your left hand, take your right hand to your sacrum and start to spin your chest open to the right and then take your right arm back. Good, nice, simple, easy little twist. If you wanna straighten your right leg, you can, if you wanna get fancy. Good, take your right arm up alongside of your ear and grab a hold of the knee once again. Very good. Take your right foot and bring it either into a tree pose or you can take it into the half lotus variation of the tree. You can hold the foot if you wish or you can let go of the foot. Take a couple breaths here, any variation you like. Little sneak attack hip action. Good, nice. And then nice and easy, release your right foot to the floor and shake it out. Really good. Once again, find your two feet. Find the center of yourself, um, that axis mundi dropping right through the center of you from the universal down into the core of the planet. And now pick your left foot up. So find that pattern again all over in the body. I've been throwing all the patterns at you. We have these ball and mitt fits in the body where there's something that's like a hard shell and there's something that is soft and can receive it. So here the palms of the hands receiving the ball of the knee. Then take your right hand to your knee and open up your torso to the left. Nice big breath. Take your left arm up alongside of your ear, grab the knee once again, and then when you're ready, transition into your variation of a tree pose. You might choose to find this half lotus shape, or you can place the foot into your thigh or on your shin. You can hold your foot in the half lotus if you wish whatever is calling to you. Nice big breath. Good, and then nice and easy, release that to the floor and shake out your legs. Really beautiful job. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Hinge from your hip crease and fold over your legs. Inhale and halfway lift. And one more time, just fold down over yourself. Pick up your heels into the palms of the hands, your knees to your armpits. And let the crown of the head go. Good, we're gonna play the edges a little bit of what happens when we really have all these folds and we find this pattern in the body. So I want you to really get your knees in your armpits, really get your hands into your heels. Look forward so you're lengthening pubis towards your sternum. And then I want you to start to pick your heels up. Send your cossacks, your tailbone back, and your sternum forward, lift the heels. See if you can find a weird sense of ease here, ultimately. Another couple breaths. It's very light when you find all the fits and the folds, whatever's happening, smiling at yourself. 
Good. Redescend the knees. Straighten the, uh, the heels, pardon me. Straighten your legs and hang. Really good. Unhook from the heels. Walk your feet back to downward facing dog. One last time, buttock bones nice and high on the balls of the feet, look forward, and then lower down to your knees. Grab a block, and we're gonna place it the wide way between our heels. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can sit cross-legged. Very good. Take a moment and organize yourself on your perineum. So again, the patterning in the body, when we're connected at the perineum, the crown of the head can rise. There's a sense in which we can find a real wave through the spine. And these arches repeat themselves through the whole of the body, just like we see them in so much of great nature and in so much of our architecture. So sitting in the Varasana, take your arms up and then interlace them behind your head. Let your head rest back in your hands. We're going to play with filling up the cup that we have made. We've really been organizing the body to receive the breath, to receive that currency that we call prana that rides on the breath. So we'll practice a Bastrika's breath. It's a forceful inhale and a forceful exhale. I always say it kind of sounds like the, a bull snorting. So inhale, take your elbows in, round your back. Exhale, pop it open. <laughs> Keep going. So it's a real sense in which you're making yourself available, that you're making yourself willing to receive. You're setting up the conditions to receive a new breath, to empty out what isn't serving, to play with those patterns of emptying and filling, right? Again, the sighing of the tides, oceanic tide of the breath, in, out, in, out, push, pull, push, pull. Good, and then after a little while, switch the hand that's on top so you're playing your non-habitual side and do it again. Good, do that a couple more times. Open it up, pause at the top. Take a nice deep breath in. Take in three little sips. One more little sniff. Hold your breath. Good, L keep your arms where they are. Let the breath go, switch which hand is on top once again. And let's play for the spin. So same breath, different intention. Inhale to the left, exhale to the right. Good. Here, we're playing the pattern of the rising and the setting of the sun. So every time you spin to the left, think that the birds are chirping, the sun is coming in, the eastern window in your bedroom, it's waking you up, and every time you spin to the right, you're on your favorite beach watching the sunset. And behind you, the moon rises and the moon sets. So you're playing the arc of potential and the arc of reflection, seizing the day and owning the night. So breathe and spin around yourself. Still playing the pattern of push-pull, but inviting in a different piece of your imaginative self. In, out, in, out, in, out. Good, about 10 more. Good, come back to the center, take a nice deep breath in. Three little sips. One more little sniff. Exhale, let it go, release your hands. Bring the backs of your hands to your thighs and just feel all your chemistry humming. You might be a little sort of buzzed from the movement of the breath. Feel the height of the spine, the little patterns repeating all over in the body, all of these soft potentiated places and these hard shells of memory, all the fits and the folds and the ways in which you are part of. Always encourage taking time in meditation and shavasana if that's available to you. And if today it's time for you to step away from your mat, you can take your hands in front of your face, rub your palms together nice and vigorous, get some heat between your hands, cup your palms over your eyes, fingertips on your hairline. Let in the fertile darkness, opening your eyes behind your hands. Release your palms, let in the light, and welcome yourself back into your space. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. See you next time.
My name is Selena Garofino. I created my 200 hour self-paced, totally virtual Yoga Lines accredited teacher training and priced it at just $4.99 because I believe that everyone deserves access to excellence and education. Studying with me live streaming or in person can cost upwards of $2,500. And I want anyone that desires to pursue this path with me to be able to do so at an accessible rate from the comfort of their own home. Inside of this training, you will learn to cue with potency and efficacy. You'll learn to sequence powerfully vinyasa, hatha yoga classes, and so much more. You'll learn the art of adjustments, how to use props effectively and purposefully, not just saying to your students, grab a block if you need to. There are guest lecturers talking about topics like trauma-informed yoga, anti-racism in the yoga space, and so much more. When you're part of this program, you have access to bi-weekly calls with me for as long as you wish. Additionally, I host a special monthly event for all of my students and graduates. You have access to the recordings for as long as you wish. Inside of those classes, we talk about business of yoga. We go into deep pose studies. There's special meditation and asana classes, special storytelling classes, and so much more. Basically, I'm telling you that I've got you even after you graduate the program. We also have a private student forum that is not on social media, so you don't have to log into your Facebook to connect with other learners or to connect with me. If this sounds like something that you are interested in exploring, I invite you to head over to my website or send me a message so we can chat. Excellence in education is yours, and I am here to help you deepen your practice. Whether you just want to really dive into the heart of the yoga tradition or you're ready to take your passion for yoga out into the world, this is for you.